Thanks for stopping by to check out yet another fun-filled, action-packed episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this Macintosh MC225 stereo power amplifier. Macintosh sold these between 1961 and 1967 at a price of $198, which would be around $1,800 today. It was rated at 25 watts per channel into 8 ohms at 0.5% THD maximum and had a listed frequency response of plus or minus 0.1 dB from 18 Hz to 30 kilohertz. We'll see how it does a little later on in this video. It weighs in at 35 pounds and I'll show you a tour of it. It does use four 7591 tubes, these guys here and it turns out that two of the tubes needed to be replaced. I ended up replacing all four tubes, just as good measure. I will give a tour of the outside of the unit and then take off the bottom cover and show you the inside of the unit. This unit has had some restoration done to it, which is good. We will see what it looks like and how it performs, and then I will tell you what I thought it sounded like. Here is a side view of the MC225, and I did dim the lights and plug it in so that you could see the uh, glow of the tubes just for kind of fun. The output tubes, these four in the back, those are 7591s. Now, they were replaced. There was a pair of them that was weak, and I decided to replace all four. The brand of tubes that I used were called JJ tubes, and they are a matched set of four using the Apex matching system. I got them from antique electronic supply in Tempe, Arizona. As far as the other tubes we have, this guy right here is a 12BH7. The next one down is a 12AU7, another 12BH7, a 12AU7, and lastly a 12AX7. So that's kind of the tube layout and complement. Uh, these two guys right here, those are your auto transformers that go to the speakers and here is a power supply transformer. Here is the business end of the MC225 and starting right here we have your right channel input. Here is our left channel RCA input. Here is the right gain control input and the left gain control input. This little switch right here is your stereo mono switch. If you slide it over to the right then it will act as a mono block the channel that is used for the mono block is the right channel and then the right channel becomes the gain control when it's a mono block. Also you have to move some jumper wires uh, amongst these uh, speaker terminal blocks that is described in the owner's manual. Also here is your unswitched AC output. You have a user replaceable slow blow fuse. These This socket right here is to use for I would believe a intercom or a PA system. It's 600 volts, 70 volts. It, it's like 600 ohm, 70 volts. So uh, it describes in the manual more specifics on that, but I think it's more for PA system use. And, and obviously right here, these are your speaker outputs for your left channel and your speaker outputs for your right channel. You have 16, 8, and 4 ohm taps on the transformers for each of your channels. I wanted to give a little tour of the inside of this particular Macintosh MC225. Right off the bat, I want to point out that the major electrolytic filter caps have been replaced. You can see a couple of them right here. There's also two more right here. And pretty much all the resistors and smaller capacitors seem to have remained the same. The gain controls for the left and right channel are here and here. And these big guys right here are actually capacitors. I believe they're called bumblebee capacitors. Our input driver tubes, I guess I'll call them, start here and here. And, and these guys right here are all driver and inverter tubes. And the, the 7591 output tubes are underneath here. And we'll get a, a view of the bottom of them in just a minute. But uh, I just kind of wanted to give a quick tour of how this thing is put together. Here is part of the power supply board where there's rectifiers underneath. We'll see those in a minute. Here are some more um, filter caps for the power supply that have been replaced. And coming around 
you can kind of see the uh, fuse holder and the AC outlet jack which would be right here fuse holder here AC outlet jack there so the speaker uh, terminals are all along here and they coated them with uh, silicone for some reason or another I'm going to flip the amp around so we have a little bit better view. This right here is L5. It is a choke for the power supply and you can see the two diodes that are part of the power supply there that are part of um, a voltage doubler uh, circuit to get the uh, large voltages needed to run these tube amplifiers. And it's just a, a little bit different view showing the uh, replacement capacitors uh, right here and here and here that were replaced. So here is a different view from the um, bottom and this guy right here, this guy right here as well as all these that I'm going to show you are the output tubes and these are just several of the capacitors that are used in the circuit and they're original with the exception of those two right there those guys are a replacement and once again you can see just some uh, more of the uh, sockets for the output tubes and pretty much everything else is uh, original other than the electrolytic capacitors that have been replaced I wanted to show the problem that the MC225 is having and right now we're looking okay but I'm going to increase the input signal level to it and watch the right channels THD as I increase that level so right now we're doing okay the spec was 25 watts into 8 ohms at less than 0.5 percent THD so right now we're at about a little over 20 watts and we're at 1.34 percent for the right channel the left channel is looking really good if I bump up the power a little bit more the right channel is still 0.21 percent and we're almost at 25 watts so here we're a bit over 25 watts and we're at about 0.7 percent for the left channel and 7.6 percent for the right channel so the right channel has some issues and hopefully I will be able to figure out what those issue or issues are. Here is the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz after the four output tubes have been replaced. And while the right channel's THD is at 1%, it is much better than it was before the output tubes were replaced. The left channel is looking pretty good SNR and THD wise. The, the right channel's SNR at 70 is not spectacular, but it's not all that bad considering the age of this and its THD at 1% is a lot better than what it was. I decided to go ahead and clean and lube the gain controls and then set them for about 21 dB. Here we are at about 23 watts, a little over 23 watts into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz and you can see that both the right and left channels THD is we'll say less than 0.4%. The SNRs are at least 76 dB, and the THD plus noise is around, we'll call it minus 49 dB. So overall, it's not looking that that bad at all, and I just thought it would be nice to show how it performed at slightly less than the 25 watts that it's rated at. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the MC225 adjusted for 31 dB of gain and we're just south of 25 watts per channel in 8 ohms. You can see that from the point where we were at 21 dB of gain, the right channel's THD went a little bit higher, but also our power is just a little bit higher. So the high gain setting seems to maybe have helped the SNR just a tad. The only negative to using the higher gain setting is that also means you're going to get uh, a lot more noise at lower volume settings. So that's kind of a little bit of a trade-off there. Here's the frequency response of the MC225 with it putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. The specification was 0.1 dB flatness and we're not too far off. Maybe at the high end of the band we're down 0.45 dB for the 
right channel and maybe 0.35 dB for the left channel. At the low frequency part of the band, they're both within uh, 0.2 dB. We do have a little channel balancing uh, mismatch going on, I'll call it. They're, but they're still pretty close. They're within uh, maybe 0.2 dB at the low part of the band as far as being totally balanced. There is a little 60 hertz hum spike there that's pretty low, maybe two tenths of a dB, and that's quite common. So overall, I would say that this MC225 did a pretty darn good job of meeting the frequency requirement. I decided to measure the performance of the MC225 with it putting out 18 watts into 8 ohms and the gain control set for 21 dB. 18 watts into 8 ohms for a pair of efficient speakers is going to make a lot of sound. And the THD for both channels is less than, we'll call it 0.2%, and the SNRs are above 74 dB. So if you were running it at 18 watts into 8 ohms, it's going to perform really, really good for you. Here is the multi-tone test results, which show a distortion-free range of between 10 to 12 and a half bits, and this is into 8 ohms. This plot just shows the harmonic levels with the MC225 putting out 15 watts into 8 ohms. And you can see that the third harmonic, which would be an odd harmonic for both left and right channels, are larger than the second harmonic, which is the even harmonic. And I just kind of wanted to point out that just because something has tubes in it doesn't mean that it's going to have even harmonics being larger than the odd harmonics. Here we're looking at the THD SNR at 1 kHz with the MC225 putting out a little over 25 watts into 4 ohms now with gain set for around 20 dB. What's interesting is that with the 4 ohm load, the left channel has gotten worse as far as THD and SNR. The THD is now 1.5%, whereas the right channel got better at least for THD and SNR, when it went to a 4 ohm load. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's kind of just what I'm measuring now. Here is the frequency response of the MC225 with it putting out 10 watts into 4 ohm loads. So above 100 hertz or so, the channels are very well balanced and only down maybe 4 tenths of a dB at 20 kilohertz. At the very low end of the band, we do have a little difference in channel balance, probably as much as, oh, I would say a half a dB at some points. And then once you get to 100 hertz, they're both basically the same. The right channel has a worst case flatness of maybe four tenths of a dB, and the left channel has a worst case flatness of maybe two tenths of a dB. This plot shows the output impedance of the MC225 using its 8 ohm taps. And there is no specification for it, but this translates to a damping factor of about 11.4. This graph shows the THD versus frequency at a couple different power levels into 8 ohms, anywhere from 15 watts to 5 watts. And the very Worst case, THD would be about 0.6% at either end of the bands. But other than that, for the most part, it is less than maybe 0.2%. So overall, the MC225 is doing a good job meeting the distortion requirements. The MC225 is only rated at 25 watts per channel. It should be used with efficient loudspeakers for best results. In my case, I paired the MC225 with my Carver C1 preamp, and the loudspeakers that I hooked up to the MC225 were the Klipsch Lascalas that I own and did a review on. It was a very nice matching, and it sounds really good. The, the sound that I got was very good. I think it was only second to when I had the Macintosh MC240 hooked up, which I did a review on a few episodes ago. That's a 40 watt per channel stereo amplifier. And I thought it sounded a little sweeter to be totally honest, but unless I had the two amplifiers set side by side and was doing an AV test, uh, maybe a future video, I don't know that I would hear a difference. I was able to reach as loud a level as I would ever probably want to 
listen to in my uh, man cave where I have the clips of scholars. I was able to reach as loud a listening level as I would ever want for about 95% of my listening with the MC-225. The other 5% would be where I try to shake pictures off my wall. This would be a great addition to my uh, stereo system in the uh, the room where the scholars are in. But it's had a good sound and as far as any nuances, the only nuances are like a lot of amplifiers, not necessarily tube amps, but a lot of amps. You will get some hum if you put your ear right next to the uh, tweeter mid-range area. That was the case with this amplifier. It goes away once you back a few feet away and once music's on, uh, that hum noise goes away totally. So that's kind of normal. Uh, one other thing that I did, I, I normally had these set, these potentiometers for the gain set at around 21 dB. That's going to be hard for a normal user to know uh, where 21 dB is unless they have the, the proper know-how to set that up. But I moved it probably a little, probably about the 1 o'clock position maybe of these potentiometers. And 21 dB seemed to be a good, a good area for them to work in. As far as the 4 ohm data didn't look nearly as good and I couldn't get probably more than close to 25 watts when hooked up to 4 ohms. You would expect to be able to get closer to 50 watts in 4 ohms, but that didn't happen using the um, 4 ohm taps. And I think the frequency response was not as, uh, as good with the 4 ohm tap mode. So for 4 ohm speakers, it's going to probably work okay, but it's probably not optimum for whatever reason. Also, I did not run it as a mono amp. You have to connect uh, different jumpers here and there, and I, I just didn't want to, to, to mess with that after I did the 4 ohm testing on it. But other than that, it would be a, a nice amplifier to have in one's collection, and it, it sounded really good. So once again, I thank you for taking time out of your day or night to watch this video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. And until next time, have a great day or night.